In this segment, we're going to talk about how to do parameter estimation in hidden Markov models. So we're going to assume that we have some labeled data for our tagging task that is going to look like the following. OK, so this is similar to our notation for labeled training sets for classification. Um, the only difference is now we assume that we have a whole bunch of sequences, um, that, which are the xi's. And then for each one, every word is annotated with a particular tag. Um, and those are the yi sequences. All right, so we're going to appeal to the same idea of maximizing data likelihood that we saw in uh, logistic regression, but now we're going to maximize this. And again, we've uh, kind of taken the log of this already and logged some. Um, So this is the generative probability of the data, or the, or the or rather the joint probability of, of y and x. So we can call this the generative likelihood. So recall that this is a generative model, it is a probability distribution over y comma x, not y conditioned on x, like logistic regression is. And so when we look at this data, we're not just thinking about maximizing uh, p of y given x. Uh, but we're, in fact, thinking about maximizing the joint distribution here. All right. So we can unpack this using uh, the uh, using the definition of the HMM as follows. OK, I'm not going to get too precise here about the sums. Um, but essentially, the sums over i are sums over the training data. So if we consider this first term, we're thinking about the log probability of y i uh, of y1 for each sequence i in the training data. And so that's a different y1 for each sequence, right? And then for the second and third terms, we are looking at a sum over i, which is over the, uh, over the uh, training data. And then sum over j, which is over the like sentence, um, the index or the kind of position within the sentence, right? And so it's saying we you know we have to loop over all the sequences and then loop over all the words and uh, accumulate the probability of, in the second case, seeing the uh, you know that x that x given that y, um, and in the third case, seeing that transition. Okay. So this is a big, long, gnarly, complicated thing. But fortunately, the estimation for this is going to be very simple. Um, so so uh, I'm going to call this MLE with frequency counts. So suppose we have a biased coin with probability p of heads. And then we observe the sequence h, 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 t. And I ask you, what is the maximum likelihood probability p for this coin. So given these observations, we don't know what p is. What's the value of p that maximizes the data likelihood? So if I if I were to just ask you, you know, or you know, ask, ask an elementary school 
you know, student, like what's, what seems most likely given this, um, you know, ignore your prior that it's a, that it's an unbiased coin. You know, you might just say it's three fourths, right? Because, uh, we see three H's and one T. And so, uh, it looks like H shows up three fourths of the time. Right. Uh, and this actually turns out to be correct. Um, and so the way you can kind of validate this for yourself is the likelihood of this data is three log p plus log of one minus p. Um, and again, that's just basically saying the log probability of the first event, h is log p, log p, log p, and then log one minus p because tails shows up with probability one minus p. Um, so that's uh, the, the kind of, well, that's the argmax value here. Um, of, of this expression. Okay, so uh, the basic moral of the story is HMM parameter estimation doesn't involve gradient descent or anything like that. You could do it by counting and normalizing. And what I mean by that is that we're going to look at our data. We're going to look at instances of each of these events of initial uh, samples of emissions and of transitions. We're going to count up occurrences of those. And then we're just going to normalize them to make them probability distributions. And it turns out that this is the correct procedure for maximizing this likelihood. OK, so let's get that gnarly looking likelihood thing out of here. and we can look at an example and see how this works. So the tags, we're going to use a simplified tag set with three tags, noun, verb, and stop. So what I showed in the initial definition of the HMM is that at a certain point when we get to the end of the sequence, we have to transition to the stop tag. And that's what's going to tell us that, you know, OK, the sentence is done. And our vocabulary is they can fish. So all these they can fish examples are taken from the uh, Jacob Eisenstein book. Uh, it's a nice, simple example to deal with here. And so let's say our data is the following. Remember, these are going to be labeled instances. Um, so. So we have they can and they fish. And each of these is labeled as noun, verb, stop. OK, so if we think about the start probabilities, remember that this is going to be a vector with two positions, um, n and v. So technically, it's defined over the entire tag set. But stop is never going to be the first thing in the sentence. So we're just going to kind of drop it and not, and not show it here. Um, and we can count up our uh, we can count up our occurrences here, and we get two sequences that start with n and two that and zero that start with v. And so when we normalize this, we get probability one and probability zero for n and v. Okay. Tags. So again, we're going to draw this as a rectangular matrix. I said it was going to be square, um, but uh, we are never going to transition from stop into anything else. And so given that, we don't need to, ref we don't need to ever have it as the kind of you know, probability of the previous thing. OK. And so if we collect counts, we get this. And then when we normalize that, we get the following. And then finally, for the emissions, all right, so we have two occurrences of they as nouns, 
and we have one occurrence of can as a verb and one occurrence of fish as a verb. All right, and so when we normalize this one, we end up with something a little bit more interesting, uh, which is which is the following. I'm just going to abbreviate these uh, these words. So the thing to notice is that this one half, this is not the probability of like verb given can or anything like that, right? It's not saying if we see can, what's the probability that it's a verb? It's the probability of can given verb. So it's like when we see verb, what is the distribution over possible verbs? And this is generally going to be some very large, very flat distribution where there's going to be a ton of possible things. They're all going to have like 1% probability or less. Um, but it's very important to keep straight the direction that we're thinking about this, uh, you know, this probability distribution going in. All right. So the, the last kind of detail I'll add here for the parameter estimation is smoothing. Um, and the idea behind smoothing is just that uh, it's a form of regularization in the sense that we might not want to directly maximize the data likelihood. We might want to instead add a small amount of uh, kind of fake data to avoid getting a, a sort of assigning zero probability to sequences that, you know, maybe don't actually have zero probability if we really think about it. So the, this is called smoothing because the distribution right now is very peaked. Like, you know, for example, we say there's a 100% chance of noun occurring as the first tag. Um, and when we smooth that, we're going to end up in a situation where we say, OK, there's actually only 99% you know, chance. Um, so for the sake of math, let's just say that we turn our uh, transition counts into the following. Um, So we just like added one everywhere. Um, and then uh, if we normalize this, we get the following. OK. So this tells us how to uh, estimate these parameters. So now, given an example um, like they can fish. Um, what you should be able to do is compute the probability of the joint probability of this example here, given these estimated parameters. And if we do that, so we have to think about y1, x1 given y1, y2 given y1 x2 given y2, y3 given y2, x3 given y3, and then stop given y3. Um, and the numbers you get for these, I'll just kind of do this in place, are 1, 1, 3 fifths, 1 half, 1 fifth, 1 half, and three fifths. And so notice that this uh, this v to v transition would have had probability zero if we had not done the smoothing. And so even though we only smoothed the transitions, it turns out it was enough for our uh, HMM to be able to say, okay, you know, they can fish. That's at least something that you know I can imagine seeing and assign it non-zero probability. Now the uh, the model still assigns it a very small probability, but in some ways this is kind of correct if you think about it in that this is a distribution over all possible sequences of words and part of speech tags. And even in this relatively small vocabulary, there's still a whole bunch of different uh, kind of sequences that can show up. Um, and you know the model has to assign some probability mass that sums to one over all of these possible sequences. So here we see how to 
go from a corpus and counts uh, to basically count up this data and normalize it, and then that gives us our parameters, which turn out to be the maximum likelihood uh, parameters here. So now that we have the parameters for this model, we can come back to our original question of how do we actually use this for part of speech tagging, and that's what we're going to talk about next. That's it for this segment.